Welcome to the Tradex Foods 3-Minute Market Insight. This is Tasha Cadence and this week we tell you all you need to know about cell-based seafood. Cell-based meat is a groundbreaking and rapidly accelerating discovery on the verge of entering the public food market. Seafood is at the forefront of this mission as it is easier to grow than red meat, being purely a muscle tissue. Scientists collect stem cells that, once fed and nurtured properly, naturally and spontaneously organize themselves into muscle tissue. At this moment, labs are sticking mainly to minced meat as it is easier to grow, but companies such as Blue Nalu and Wild Type have begun fabricating whole muscle tissue cell-based fillets and medallions. Not only would these alternatives have a much lower environmental impact, but saving resources used to feed livestock and farmed animals could go a long way for the global demand for food. As of today, the cell-based seafood market is non-existent as it has yet to hit shelves in restaurants, but has huge potential if it is introduced properly. Blue Nalu CEO and President Lou Cooperhouse recognizes this huge potential, with the company recently raising over $20 million in their round A fundraising earlier this month, with investors from all around the globe in 11 different nations. So Blue Nalu's whole focus is really to create a more stable supply chain, supplement the current industry practice, uh, you know, we, we embrace uh, wild-caught and farm-raised sustainable practices, absolutely. Um, but with hopefully, we can make a difference, and altogether, we can help feed the world in the decades to come. So it's just really a global supply chain challenge. So see, the sea animals have a much larger challenge in some ways. You know, first of all, you know, they're they're being imported around the world. In, in America, for example, the FDA identifies that 94% of the seafood that we consume is imported. Mm -hmm. um, so and it's coming from long distances mm -hmm. with a, a great environmental footprint. Yep. Um, so, so we're very excited at the prospect of actually building a factory that really kind of redefines local uh, in the case of seafood, uh, where you can actually provide seafood that comes from a factory that might be 50 or miles away, not 7,000 miles away, and without the bycatch, without the loss in yield as well. So, so really it's 100% yielded product, just the filet um, that's distributed to you in your restaurant or your home. And so one competitive advantage it has is it can actually create jobs to build factories and displace imports. So it can create a more stable supply chain. And for the food service, it creates a consistency, stability, you know, more and stability of, of supply, but also stability of price. Mm -hmm. You know, right now we're, we're seeing such erratic behavior when it comes to pricing and volatility and the pricing volatility and the, even the overall availability. So, so a huge competitive it has is really stability and consistency. Blue Nalu is currently building their first small factory in San Diego to get their products into restaurants for 2021. If all goes well, they could begin to produce hundreds of millions of pounds of product in their larger scale facilities. Due to current global conditions, we also asked how cell-based seafood would fare with a pandemic such as COVID-19. Here's what he had to say. Top of people's minds is that this world is very vulnerable and, and uh, you know, we can't necessarily know what's going to come next. And, and it, it, particularly with the effects of climate change and other environmental issues. And in this case, obviously, a virus that came from uh, one part of the world that affected all of us quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So what Blue Nalu is really addressing is really a more secure supply chain. We have a really, really vulnerable supply chain uh, coming from our oceans and also from our, our agriculture farms. Mm -hmm. that um, that having a third option really creates stability. I think what we're all looking for is, uh, is clearly it's an unstable world right now. And I think what Lunala really is providing is a solution for global stability and it's really about food security. We also spoke to Wild Type co-founder and CEO Justin Kolbeck 
who sees cellular aquaculture as a new third leg for the seafood industry rather than a replacement, as he believes they will always be a place for responsibly fished or farmed seafood in the market. He commented that, with so much growth ahead, we believe consumers will be asking for a wide range of new products, including cell cultured seafood as well as plant-based alternatives. While no cell cultured meat or seafood products are on the market today, he believes these products will offer customers a few big benefits, such as transparency in the supply chain, no environmental contaminants such as mercury, microplastics, or antibiotics, and the product won't be discouraged by depleting stocks. Not only this, they will also be able to produce seafood in any geographic location, minimizing food, food miles and increasing the availability of fresh fish to inland areas for the first time. And finally, they also hope this new source of seafood will help alleviate some of the pressure on our existing system and make up for supply shortages when there are natural declines in wild catch, pen breaks, or other challenges associated with farmed fish. One of the biggest challenges for the commercial potential of classic meat alternatives is the similarity to authentic meat products, with cultured meat at the forefront versus vegetarian or vegan options. Those options, such as soy or plant-based meals, are less likely to grow beyond the current trend, as they lack the sensory profile appreciated by the average consumer. Wild Type and Blue Nalu say they are working to hit shelves as soon as possible and if they are capable of meeting even 1% of the demand of the trillion dollar seafood market, that's still around $10 billion. Consulting firm A.T. Kearney recently estimated that cultured meat could represent 35% of the global meat market by 2040, but they still have some huge obstacles to overcome. With technological advancements and the industrialization of biotechnological processes, as well as the conversion rates for these alternatives being around four times higher than conventional meat, we expect enough accelerated growth and consolidation for these products to take the market by storm. What are your thoughts on these unconventional approaches to meat and seafood? Where do you think they will lead? Always feel free to contact us at TradexFoods.com or on our Twitter at TradexFoods. Thank you for joining me for the Tradex Foods 3 Minute Market this week. This is Tasha Cadence. Remember to stay safe, buy smart, and eat more seafood.